everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm doing a preview for Reign of Hades, an upcoming solo cooperative game where you are an upcoming solo cooperative game where you are the Greek Olympian gods trying to kick Hades out of the throne after he's staged a coup and taken over. I'll be doing a full solo playthrough of the first main scenario after the tutorial scenario, and then I'll give my impressions on the game at the end of the video. And a reminder that we accept no compensation for our coverage, we just want to help you make an informed decision. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. You can also listen to our podcast for reviews and design discussions, or join our Discord and come say hi. So as I said, Reign of Hades is based on sort of an alternate Greek mythology thing where Hades is not nearly as nice as he is in the actual myths, and he has staged a coup d'etat, he invited you all to his wedding with Persephone, he poisoned everybody, and you were captured and drained of your godly powers and trapped in the underworld. All that happens in the tutorial scenario, which you're supposed to lose, wasn't really a fun one, I thought, to uh, film. So here is the prison break scenario. This is the first mostly full scenario. There's a few rules that come into play to make things even more complicated and tactically interesting in scenario two. But I wanted to show you one that wasn't a bit overwhelming at first. So each scenario in the game will have a map like this. You're going to see a lot of miniatures, but they don't work quite the way you might expect. So all of these enemy miniatures, these little guys with spears, are actually just showing how dangerous an area is. And that's how many cards we'll draw if we start our turn in that area, basically. So, like, these guys won't be moving around except through our effects. And it's actually very hard to remove them. you got to kill four guys to remove one miniature. So, again, don't think of this as, like, an actual miniature combat game. But then we also have miniatures for us. So I'm playing as Athena and Zeus in this one. You can play from one to four players, and they do have rules for true solo, but I kind of like, uh, at least so far, from playing a little bit. I like how the uh, two-handed play works, because what you do is you have characters in kind of the shadows called cover, and characters on the battlefield, and the people in cover are supporting the people on the battlefield. They have completely different actions available to them. So I like that kind of dynamic. And by the way, if I was playing with four players or three players, they'd have their own separate team, Alpha and Beta, that are in like their own area, and we'd kind of switch off between us. So it's really kind of a new thing I've never seen done before in co-op, how they're sort of segmenting the players. But each player has a player board, and they're only going to be paying attention to one side of the player board at a time. Again, if they're in the battlefield or in cover. You also have a hand of cards, and all these cards are going to flip 180 when you go into cover, and then back when you go into the battlefield. And on your turn, you are in simultaneous fashion, whatever order you want, playing up to four cards. And then, with some exceptions, you get them all back and you can use them again. Some of them just give you main actions, which are going to trigger some of the main options on your board. Some of them are challenge cards, which are going to let you interact with little story-based options on the map and also let you progress toward winning the scenario. And then finally, you have feat cards, which most often give you some kind of bonus in combat, or if you're the person in cover, let you help out the person in the battlefield who's in combat. But these cards, unlike the rest, will flip face down after you use them, and they go into this area called Oblivion, and you have to take the focus action to get them back. So everything else, the challenge and the main action cards, those come back every turn for free, but these cards you have to work a little bit to get back. Enemy cards will also be coming out mainly from those little miniatures that I showed you. They're going to have their stamina value that you have to use to defeat them. They'll have their vigilance value, which is going to determine how tough it is to attack them with a lore attack, kind of a sneak attack from cover. They have uh, this drain value, which is how much you can basically heal yourself by sucking their life force away once you've defeated them. And finally, they've got this little activation down here, which will do something negative if you don't attack them, basically. Now, this is the first scenario, and we're supposed to be, like, drained almost completely. Like, we're almost as weak as mortals right now. Wah, wah for the gods. <laughs> so uh, these are pretty easy enemies, actually vastly easier than the ones that we were fighting in the tutorial where we were supposed to lose, and they were, like, really challenging. And at the start of the game, we'll draw one enemy into a sentinel monster slot right here. And this is one of the main game end conditions. So if this gets full and we would have to put another monster there, we lose. And how it gets full is we'll be drawing monsters on our turn based on the number of these little sentinels in our spot. 
And if we don't kill a monster or use our actions to lure it so it stays with us and kind of like taunt it away from becoming a sentinel monster, then it'll go over here. And again, if we get too many, we'll lose. Uh, you also have this alert sentinel track, but we're not going to use that in the first scenario. That comes into play in the second scenario. Another way you can lose is from running out of Icor. So each god or goddess has Icor. Athena only has two to start. You can see that on her character card here. And these are character cards you can level up. They can flip and gain more powerful versions of themselves. And like the art will actually change and become cooler. We'll see if that happens in this scenario. But if a god or goddess loses all of their I-Core, you're going to do something different based on your difficulty level. If you're playing on easy mode, you're just going to become unconscious. If you're playing on medium mode, or if you leave someone unconscious too long, you're going to start dying. And if you leave them dying too long, or if you're playing on hard mode, this happens immediately, you just lose the scenario. So if any god or goddess is fully lost, you're done. There is a sort of fail forward mechanic in that if you progress far enough through a scenario, then you can technically say you don't want to play it again. Otherwise, you just have to repeat it. So in this one, I think if we fully unlock the attempt escape action here, which is what we're trying to do right now, it's got these red X's on it, which make it unavailable. If we fully unlock that, but don't quite make it to actually run away, then we could be like, okay, we made it. And there's like a different thing you read to show that you, you know, barely limped your way out. <laughs> Hopefully we'll have more success than that. And combat is dice based. You put these dice on people and you're trying to get these little kind of arrowhead looking things. You don't want to get these little blast symbols because that'll cause hits to you and make you lose i -Core. You also don't want to get these symbols, which will activate the enemy's ability. There's a bunch of resources, and they're tracked on this. These are very much a prototype, so it's a little tough to see the numbers sometimes. They're well aware of that. So uh, resources you have. Uh, first of all, you've got Divinity. This you're building up to level up. You have these little action tokens on your born, and they each cost a certain amount of Divinity to level up to the next level. You get a discount on certain actions based on your character. So Athena is better at healing. Zeus is better at starting combat. You also have your carrying capacity. This just goes down when you gain items. So it basically is how much you can carry. You have Spark, which you usually spend to gain items and like pick up things. Additionally, it can be used to interact with some like more creative uh, side of things, like attacking somebody with a uh, piece of the environment or something. Uh, Nectar can be used to heal yourself and for some other special effects. And then Might is most often used for like your action cards to do special actions and things. And you'll see these uh, five slots here. Whenever you level something up, you're going to put the new level in there and then slot these in here. And whenever this is fully filled up, you advance to the next level. So there's not like an automatic leveling mechanic in this one. One character could be like level two and another one could be level one when they go to the next scenario, depending on how things go. But let's uh, leave the rest for the actual playthrough, and I'll explain things as we go. So let's read a little narrative. It's very short. This game does not uh, force you to read a ton of narrative when you play. It has been ages since you've last seen daylight. So your eyes hurt from pain when a shining light bursts through your cell. You get yourself together and crawl towards it, dragging your heavy chains along, only to recognize your divine cup in the shiny object illuminating your cell. Get yourselves together for Uranus' sake, commands a harsh voice offering you the sweetest of all beverages. Nectar from your own cup? Persephone sent me to help you, but I don't have all day. Hades kept you alive on purpose. He is torturing you with hope of once getting out of here. His arrogance is your opportunity to get back at him, but you must hang on to the last drops of Ikor in you, or you will never leave his domain. Now drink up already. There's a hundred armed giant guarding the exit. I need you in your best possible form. All right, with that, we're ready to jump in. So we've got some challenges here. The mandatory challenges, which will correspond to these little challenge spaces that will go with each of the areas on the board, are we need to get our signature weapons. So like the weapons that represent us, Athena's spear, Zeus's, well, it should be his lightning bolt, but I think it's a sword in this. Uh, we need to search for a clue of how to get past the giant, and then we need to attempt the escape. And we also have all these other optional challenges. Now, I, I will say I'm not 100% sure <laughs> whether I'm supposed to be able to read these ahead of time, because they do kind of tell me like what they do. But it's just like a page like this. So, yeah, I, I've skimmed them. I kind of know what's coming. But maybe I'm supposed to ignore these until I actually attempt the task and just like kind of go off of what the, the thematic name is. So might be playing a little bit wrong there. It's not a big deal, I think, either way. But yeah, we can do these to get extra bonuses. Some of them are going to have us draw cards and stuff. We'll see how it goes. And these get a lot more challenging. <laughs> You'll see that scenario two has a lot more going on. Uh, once you open this one up, that's all they sent me, by the way, the tutorial in the first two scenarios. So yeah, what are we trying to do in this one? So we're trying to resolve some of those things, get our weapons back. 
But a big thing is we're trying to defeat Drakaina, which are actually, you know, even as mythology, I'm not sure what these people are. They look kind of like uh, scorpion ladies, <laughs> but they are apparently the guards. And every time you defeat one, including uh, this one that started as a sentinel monster for me, we're going to flip over one of these tokens and resolve the effect that is revealed. If we find the keys from the green and the red token, we're going to move on to the blue, and that'll give us more things we can do. Because currently we are locked out, red and blue, from going into the torture chamber, where there are even more weapons to be found. And then our signature weapons can be found in either the guard's room or in the giant's lair. The Dark Cells doesn't have anything we have to go to, so it seems like maybe going to the guards room first would be a good thing to do. All right, now we're going to get into our first round. So we'll go through wave one, wave two, and then upkeep. And the big thing is that right now, Athena is in the battlefield, and Zeus is in this like kind of shadowy, separated by a blue line area of the Cells of Torment where we are. So they're going to take a turn like that, but then when wave two comes, they're going to swap positions. Zeus will be in the battlefield and Athena will be in cover and they'll get all their cards back or except those uh, ones I showed you. So you kind of have that like back and forth of fighting and supporting each turn. That's pretty cool. And then at the end of the turn, we'll have upkeep. Some things will untap and come back and uh, we'll do it all again. But first we check how many of the enemy miniatures are in Athena's spot. And in this case, there is one. So we draw a single card. Ooh, nice. It's a Drykana, the thing that we want to uh, kill <laughs> to advance our quest. That's great. So these are going next to the active character. If she can kill it, it will go away and she can drain it if she likes. If she doesn't attack it at all, it'll automatically do its little bonus activation here. And if she doesn't kill it by the end of her turn, then it's going to go up and become a Sentinel monster. So we definitely want to take care of that. All right, so in this scenario, we both start out immobilized. Uh, Athena on the battlefield can only take the fill cup action, which would get her some more of her uh, nectar. And then Zeus can only take the rest action, which gets you pretty much any of your resources. But as a bonus action, as a free action, you can take it any time in your turn because all these actions are kind of simultaneous and in whatever order you want. Somebody can spend one nectar to remove a condition. So sure, let's have Zeus do that. So he is now nectarless, but he has broken his chains. And the reason I had Zeus do that instead of Athena is that there is this action called Free a Fellow God 105. And again, should I know what that means already? Should I have looked at the narrative entry? I don't really know. <laughs> but anyway, Zeus has, again, three fate cards to boost other people, two challenge cards, two actions. We're going to use a challenge first. And that lets him pick a challenge in his area that matches his current state, which is in cover, the little blue helmet. And he gets one divinity from doing this. That's what that little plus or up one arrow means there. So we put a utility cube on the free of fellow god spot. That can never be used again. So each of these is one time use unless otherwise indicated. And the card goes here on Zeus's leftmost spot. Challenge cards and action cards will come back at the end of the turn. Remember... And that just shows he's done one of his four actions for the turn. And this says, still empowered by the Nectar, you decide to tear off the chains of a fellow god as well. Remove the immobilized condition from another player in this zone. Yay! The Zeus goes up to two divinity. You generally need four or five to level up, and you have to take the rest action to do that. And now Athena is free to act. Didn't have to use up her own Nectar. But we've got an enemy here, and we have two options to deal with her when we don't have any weapons, because there is a start combat option that would allow us to attack her, but you need a weapon to do that. We don't have any yet. So instead, Athena could either use her ability, which at the beginning of the game is just this brawl ability. It has a little sword, a yellow sword, meaning only the battlefield character could do it. And it lets you do a yellow die, which is the uh, weakest die, and set it at the two level, which would mean you're only suffering damage. And then through abilities, you could try to get it up to a higher face, like a four with Roman numerals you see in there. Or even a six, because remember you're going for those arrowheads. So like here, two arrowheads would be enough to kill that Drykina. So that'd be one option to activate her ability. And then you can spend one nectar at any time. All these are bonus actions. So you can do them whenever to get your ability back and be ready to brawl again. But the other option is to use this spinning chain. So we'll go ahead and have Athena do it. So that's going to be a challenge for her as well. Here we go. It says, with no weapons at hand, you spin the broken chains that held you prisoner for so long, hoping to inflict as much damage as possible. So here we're going to roll the, I think it's called the fate die. And we're trying to get a four, five, six. That'll defeat the monster immediately. A two through three, this little uh, blast symbol means that they'll take one stamina damage. So they'll be half dead. 
And here would mean that we would take uh, one damage. <laughs> so we don't want that. But we can spend our one might to increase this die by one immediately after rolling it. So really we need at least a three to be successful. Or a four is fine. I'll take that. So the guard comes to check him in. Ah, I spin the chains into her face. And she is dead. And so we'll get to resolve that defeat dry kind of thing in a second. Additionally, she's got a two drain value. So if Athena would like, as an action, a regular action, while she's in the battlefield, she can drain a defeated enemy. It gets flipped face down to show it's been drained. And you get a number of might and or spark equal to the value. And you can divide them up up to these values. So Athena could get up to two spark and up to one might. So she'll probably do that in a second. But first, let's see what our first jailer has for us. A yellow, you found nothing but experience. Well, that is not the first key, <laughs> but we do get a single spark. Well, one more thing from defeating an enemy, this little track moves down one. If this gets to four, it goes back to zero. And that's when you actually get to remove one of these figures from the board. And by the way, there's also, and all this stuff is not in the training scenario, so I'm just adding a little bit extra here. There's also a little like terrain tokens. I think they're called landmarks in each space. And they have little bonuses. So the columns will let you use fate cards that could help somebody else out at any range. You'll see that Zeus, who is in the cover spaces, has like this feint that lets you reroll a combat die up to two spaces away. Motivation to give somebody an extra might up to one space away. Shield from the same space. But if Zeus discarded the columns, a one-time use thing, he could shield somebody anywhere, not worrying if they're within zero range. And yeah, there's a different one for each of these main areas we're moving into. All right, so let's figure out what we want to do. There's a totally optional thing. Zeus could check another cell, gain another divinity. Maybe we'll get somebody that could help us out or somebody terrible. <laughs> that would be his other challenge card. Athena could move into the guard's room or down the dark cell and into the giant's lair to try to reclaim our signature weapons. That seems like certainly something we want to do. Additionally, there's a token here, which means that we can collect a card there. The axes are weapons, and these little like swords with wings are feet cards. I was calling them fate cards. They're feet cards. Those are the ones that are one-time use, and you have to take the focus action to get back. Uh, whenever you have these tokens on the board, you have a little selection of cards that are face-up you can choose from. So I know if I take that one or that one, I can get exactly whichever card I want. Ruse would let the battlefield player reroll combat dice twice or increase the result of combat dice twice. That's pretty awesome. And then this one, if you were in cover, would let somebody else ignore an enemy's attack or, but oh my gosh, just let them roll a blue die straight up like you found a little dagger to give them. That's really good. Oh, and both of these give you divinity when you use them to support somebody else. Love that. But yeah, main thing I think is I want to get our weapons back, right? That seems uh, pretty important. Well, first, let's see what the heck happens with this uh, check another cell thing. So that has to be Zeus again. He's going to get a divinity, but only by placing his second challenge card. That's all he's got here. And he's got three divinity now, so he's close to being able to level something up. Let's see what he finds in this other cell. Someone might be in need of your help in one of these cells. Draw a scene cards. This is randomized. Perpetual Burden. Salmonius, condemned to Tartarus for his ambition, endures the ceaseless threat of a rock perpetually hanging over him. Begging for relief, he shares that the hundred-armed giant is unbeatable and never sleeps, although he brings up a hazy memory where he might have heard him snore. Okay, so we've got a choice here. We can spend one nectar to make the rock finally fall him and end his misery. Uh, so if we do that, we have to spend a nectar. Oh, which Zeus doesn't have anymore. We already used it to break his chains. Uh, so we could have gotten two divinity. Unfortunately, we're just going to get one divinity here. Now that gets Zeus to four divinity and his... So here, let me uh, kind of zoom in on Zeus's card. So all this stuff here is when you take wounds. Zeus has three max Icor. And when he gets hurt based on how many hits he took, like how bad the injury was then he's going to get a different wound and it'll uh, affect his actions in a certain way until he can heal it. But then over here, you've got a discount. So Zeus can make the start combat action cost minus one divinity to level up. And he's also got the exact same brawl ability that Athena does. They all, until we get our godly powers back, have the same uh, special ability. And yeah, the start combat action right now just shows you have to tap a weapon, then you attack somebody. But it says if you spend five divinity to level it up, you'll get plus one attack on that attack action for free. So you'll start with like some damage already dealt to the enemy. But that would, so that would cost five normally, but for Zeus, four, and he's got four. So yeah, let's do this. So to level up, the rest action, basic action, will let you gain a might and nectar, two spark, or so you can spend as much divinity as you like to level up. 
So let's see. All of the person in coverage actions are the same. They just get one basic action. When you are on the battlefield, this one gives you two different basic actions to use. All right, so let's go ahead and do that for Zeus. He's going to choose the level up option. He's going to lose all four of his divinity. And he's going to level up his combat. So I take this and I put it up here. So Zeus is now one-fifth of the way to leveling up to level two. Now he gets this leveled up version of the action where he gets one free hit. Ooh, and if he levels it up again for six, or I guess five with his discount, you get two free hits or a free shield to stop them from hurting. That's pretty great. Not going to matter much until we actually get our weapons back. We're working on that. And yeah, actually, let's work on that a little harder. Let's have Athena do her double action. So I can take two main actions to go through them briefly. Move lets you move, but it might get an enemy card on you when you move. Uh, discovers how you pick up items and other things. Uh, start combat is how you start combat with somebody, but you need a weapon. Fill cup gets you nectar back. Lore, if you've hurt an enemy but not finished them off, you can basically save them for a future turn. And it also lets you move around the miniatures that spawn enemies every turn, which is very powerful. And then drain, I already talked about, that lets you get uh, stuff from killing them. So let's do the move first to show uh, how that's going to go. So she can move one space for free along any of these arrows, unless there's something blocking it. So like right now we can't go into the torture chamber because we don't have the key and we can't actually leave and exit through uh, the giant's lair. So she's going to move one space to the guard room. And that's not me. That's the guard. <laughs> there we go. She could spend additional nectar to move farther, but she doesn't want to. And then we check to see if we get attacked. We count the number of people from the spaces we left and any spaces we entered. So in this case, one, two, three. And we got to roll above that to not spawn an enemy. Again, we can spend one might to increase our roll. Uh, but we got a five. We're doing great luckwise. So no extra enemy card drawn. If we had, it would have been just like before. We would have just drawn it from the deck. It would have been there. We could fight it later. Okay, and for her second action, what does she want to do? Uh, oh, let's uh, let's go ahead and drain this little lady here. So we're going to get two up to one might or two sparks. Yeah, we'll do one might and one spark here because might tends to be a little tougher to get, and that's going to boost our attack actions. So that gets her to four spark for picking stuff up and two might. Pretty good. Okay, now that she's there, let's go and use her second challenge to get our weapons back because right now the only other weapons are in the locked torture chamber, so that's kind of all we can do. Bloop. And what does it say? Thank primordials. The guards laid eyes on your weapons and they moved them down here with you. If only they knew what you were capable with them. Okay, so with one to two players, everyone gets their weapon. Oh, okay, so we don't have to go to the other space. That's nice. It's time to show them who's boss. So there was another, here it is, another space where we could have gotten our weapons from, but that's gone now because we already got them. So I have them here. Here's Athena's spear. Uh, when she attacks, she's going to get two dice, a blue that is automatically set to two and a yellow that is rolled. And she has to place both of them if she has enough enemies that can hold them. Enemies will have a certain number of little dice spots like this. But if she attacked when she had just one of these people engage with her, then she would get to choose which die to apply between the yellow and the automatic blue. Yellow dice are the worst. Blue are in the middle. Red are the best. Red tend to do more damage and you take less damage and they get to damaging the enemy faster. And then if when Athena attacks with this, she spends a might. She can uh, move one of the dice two to the right, increase its value by two, so it'll have a better result. And then she re-rolls the other die. And again, all that before I think she decides which one she wants to use. And you tap weapons to attack with them, but as a minor or a bonus action, she could spend two of her spark to get this weapon back. So she could make multiple attacks against a ton of guys every turn. Uh, Zeus, on the other hand, doesn't get blue dice. He only gets yellow. He gets one set to three and then rolls two more, and he picks two of them to keep. Uh, or if he spends one might, he can keep all three dice. So Athena is going to be a bit more consistent in doing better damage, it looks at like. And yeah, Zeus for just a single might. Oh, not uh, not uh, spark, but might. Interesting. For one might, he can use this again. Okay, cool. All right, now what does Athena want to do for her last turn? She could move back, but I don't really feel like I need to do that yet. Um, let's maybe take one regular action to discover, right? We can uh, pick up one of those feet cards at her spot. And this is going to be um, permanently added to her deck, I believe. So let's see. Uh, this one's four spark, which she actually has. So ooh, she could afford that. And that's a ridiculous one in combat to increase the value of a die by two. Uh, the evasion part to ignore the enemy's attack. You know, hopefully we won't have those in the first place. And then she could leave the cheaper one for uh, Zeus to have ruse. But oh my gosh, it costs a might to use it. Uh, this one is certainly, I think, better to use for this ability. It'll get them one divinity and get them an extra blue die roll. 
Hmm. Well, Athena can afford it, but I kind of feel like she might want to have the dagger to pass to Zeus. He has no consistent way to get blue dice yet. So yeah, let's have her. Uh, you remove the token. So to get the other feet card, we'd have to go down here. And she's going to get the ruse slash pass a dagger card by spending two spark. And that goes straight to her hand. So now she has four of these cards. Remember, after using them once, they don't go away forever. They're just like uh, in your little oblivion pile and you need to uh, take actions to get them back. Okay, so Athena's board is full, although you do have this ability called Pushing Limits, which lets you put a cube here and spend a resource to remove a card. So to remove one of your main action cards, you need to spend a Divinity. To remove a Challenge card, you need to spend a Nectar. And to remove a Feat card, which also means that you wouldn't send it to Oblivion, you need to spend a Might. So you can do that as a bonus action, then you'll free up another spot, and you can basically take five actions that turn, or if you do more of them, six or seven. Don't think I want to be doing that yet. Okay, so what can Zeus still do? There's no point in playing any feats. There's no combat going on. So we can just do his basic actions. We haven't talked about these yet. So the sneak action lets you move. You can spend extra might to move farther, whereas it was nectar to move farther with uh, battlefield actions. But the cool thing is you don't roll for enemies to attack you. So you can move sneakily and not uh, ever draw an enemy from that. You can also do Focus to get cards back from Oblivion. You do start with one randomly in there, so that would be useful for Zeus. Uh, we can't pray until Chapter 2. You can Heal, which lets you spend Nectar to get Ikor back, but Zeus has no Nectar and he hasn't been hurt, so not that. You can Lore Attack. This one's pretty cool. It might be what he wants to do. With a Lore Attack, you take a character from the Sentinel board, and you roll the Fate Die, and you're trying to exceed their Vigilance value here, and the difference is automatic stamina damage to them. So like here, if I rolled a five, she'd take one damage. And if I rolled a six, she would be defeated instantly. If you don't defeat them, then they just go to your little like lore area up here. You can have up to three monsters lord at a time. And at the start of your next battlefield turn, they're going to uh, come up and attack you, basically. But we do want to have another one of these uh, in play ready to go because we need to defeat them to find those keys, right? But yeah, it's lore attack. And the last one is rest. You already saw Zeus use that. So sure, let's, uh, let's do the lore attack. I think that makes sense. And yeah, as we level it up, we'll get automatic bonuses to the Fate Die roll, but here we have uh, no bonus at all. So all that'll matter is a 5 or a 6. If we get a 5, I'll probably spend Zeus's 1 Might to make it a 6 and just kill her straight up. Uh, otherwise, a 2. Nope. So <laughs> we just lure her over, but she dodges our attack. We don't uh, really have much strength in ourselves yet, and she'll hang out there for a second. Right, with all of us full of actions and not wanting to take any more, we get to the end of the wave. So this is we're going into wave two. Now Zeus will be like, hey, here I am. And Athena will go into hiding, which means, by the way, she could like leave this spot and come back here to the safer spot without us ever uh, <laughs> having to draw two enemy cards. And we both get all our cards back and every card we have flips to its feet side. Although just a reminder that if we had any feet cards that were face down, they would have gone into oblivion instead. On the bottom of the pile, shuffled if you use multiple ones. So you have to focus to draw other cards before you can get back to the feats you use later. As you go into wave two, Zeus's uh, little friend that he lured is going to come out to play. And because he's got an enemy there, we draw another one. Ah, oh, man, <laughs> this one does not help us find the guard's keys at all. The Giant's Hand. So it's got two stamina. It's easier to uh, surprise. And its attack says, return your hero to the starting zone and gain the immobilized condition. So basically the Giant throws us back in jail if we don't defeat this one. Well, sorry, not if we don't defeat it. As long as we get a die on it and try to attack it, even if it hurts us, we still won't resolve this symbol unless it's showing on the die we used. All right, and yeah, just to uh, start things off right... Zeus, let's have him take the start combat action. So start combat lets you like put the dice out on people and stuff, but then you can do a ton of feats and other things, both the cover character and the battlefield character to modify the things and kind of get the combat in your favor. And then it's a bonus action, a free action to actually say, hey, let's see how this combat went and like resolve your damage to them and the damage they deal to you. So I'm starting combat. I must uh, tilt or tap a weapon. So my sword of discipline. I'm going to get a yellow that's set to three automatically and roll two more dice, and I get to keep two of them. I could spend a might to keep all three, but since I only have two spots, that would make no sense. And because of Zeus's leveled up ability, I'm going to get a free hit to apply to one of the two of them. All right, so let's do our two rolled yellows. We got a five, and we got a one, the worst result possible. So hey, can you figure out which dice we're going to keep? How about the five and the, there they are, three. So a three is not a great result. It's just activating the monster. To actually get to damage against the enemy, we need to get to a four. So we'll need to like use something to increase this. 
And then the five is great, though. It's going to do two damage to the enemy. That's enough to kill either of them. And it's going to uh, have us suffer one potential damage. We need to use shields to prevent that. So let's see. How do I want to assign this? And where do I want to put my one attack? Uh, so her ability, if she resolves it, is to get plus one life. And that happens first. And I believe I can take her above her maximum life. You know, these little tokens that can go over their things to show like where they are hurt or healed. So if I did that and like didn't boost it, then she wouldn't die. But this guy is going to throw me back in jail, which is pretty annoying. I mean, I'm already in my starting spot, but having to spend another vigor I don't have <laughs> would be a little nasty. Or sorry, not vigor, uh, nectar. So hmm. well, yeah, I do think uh, not killing her is worse. So let's go ahead and put the two on her. Let's put this on the giant's hand. Let's put one here. Now the one damage will not matter unless we can somehow get to a die face that actually has a hit. So we need to increase this die or re-roll it to do anything. Now let's check Zeus's own feats first. Uh, concentration, the arrows up, means you change the type of die up one level without changing the face. So if I change this three yellow into a three blue, I would get the one damage, although it'd still throw me back in jail. So that's one way I can do it. Oh, and that one also costs one might to use. Yikes. Um, uh, Zeus could also play this to shield himself so that she wouldn't hit him. Uh, the number of hits is not like the number of wounds you're going to take. It is a potential wound. And if your shields don't equal or exceed the number of hits incoming, then you lose an Ichor. And the amount of remaining hits determines how bad of a wound it is. So, like if it was three hits, he'd have to have this uh, like shoulder injury here that makes him unable to take the focus action. That's pretty terrible. Whereas if it was only one hit, it would have this one that would make the discover action to get items cost more uh, spark. See, I'm thinking he could use concentration on himself and maybe even shield too, although that would fill up almost all of his spots. Alternatively, we shouldn't forget that we have Athena. She could play stunt on him from zero to one away to increase that one yellow die by one face or play ruse to give him a double reroll. She could pass him a dagger if she moves into his space or she could shield him, which would get her one divinity. You know what? We can hold for a second because again, we don't have to resolve the combat yet. Let's go over to Athena. I definitely want to get her out of here and back to Zeus where there are fewer enemies. But first, there is this draw attention challenge. I'm going to have her do that first with uh, one of her two actions. So that's filled up. You make noise and disrupt the lurking monsters in the area. Perhaps more guards will come your way as a result. Okay, look at the top three cards in the monster deck and place them back in any order at the bottom or top of the deck. Basically, this lets us uh, search specifically for the people who are going to let us get keys. So let's see. Spawn, no, Drakina. Okay, cool. So both these spawn are going to the bottom of the deck, even though they are easier to kill. And the only Drakina that is in the deck at the top there will go to the top. So we know we'll get a guard we want to kill next. And then hopefully there'll be more of them in here for uh, the rest of the keys and stuff. Okay, and then over from where she is, I'm going to have Athena use her stunt. This will let uh, Zeus increase the value of one of his dice by one. And she can use it within zero to one range. Remember, that's a feat, so it goes face down. We go into her oblivion at the end of the turn. And Zeus is going to increase the giant's die to a four. So now he's doing the one damage. With the other one, it'll kill the guy. But he'll also still get thrown back into jail and have his chains back on. So we'll have to have him get a nectar to deal with that. And then because why not might as well, I'm going to go ahead and use the fire pit, which lets me have a feet not go to oblivion. I flip the feet face up so that I know that it's not uh, going away, but this is removed. So that was a one time thing, but now I'm not going to lose my stunt quite yet. And then I think I'll finish up Athena before I do much with Zeus. I am going to have her do a regular action to sneak back to Zeus's spot. And then let's go ahead and have her shield Zeus. This one I will be losing but it's going to get her a divinity closer to her leveling up. I like that better than Zeus shielding himself. And you put the shield token right on an enemy, and it's going to counter the hit value there. So one shield will counter one hit. Zeus will lose no Ichor. All right, so Athena's done. Let's see what Zeus wants to do with his remaining actions. And first as a bonus action, let's resolve all of our combat. So uh, the Drakina, we do two damage to her, which is all we need. We block her hit back, so she's just defeated. Then we rifle through her snaky little pockets, and we find the diamond key. Okay, so this path to the torture chamber is open. I'm sorry, I didn't go quite far enough to the right. We need to go in there eventually to search for a clue. As for the giant's hand, we do defeat it, but it says return your hero to the starting zone where we already are, and we gain the immobilized condition again. Wah, wah. But Zeus has now defeated two enemies, so halfway to getting rid of one of those spawn tokens. But he is immobilized, so we'll need to use the gain nectar action and then get rid of it. So let's do that now. Let's do Zeus's double action. First, he'll fill cup to gain one nectar. And then you can interrupt your double action to resolve uh, bonus actions, like getting rid of the immobilize. 
And then for his other action, let's have him drain one of these guys. Uh, oh, the giant's hand is drained zero. Well, you're just useless. So he'll drain the Drakaida for two. And I think he'll get it all as Spark for now. Because I want him to be able to get that other feet card, maybe. And he's got two actions left. Let's have him uh, move over here and see if maybe he draws an enemy. So he's moving from a space with one to a space with two. So he wants to get a four or higher. A three, he will definitely use his one might to change that to a four. We don't want to be fighting when we're not ready. Okay, and then for his last action, he's going to use a challenge. And the only one he can do when he's on the battlefield is imprison a guard here. He loses a spark, so he's down to three, but he gets another divinity. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, reclaiming weapons costs us a might. I don't think I remember to do that, so let's lower Athena. She had two, she'll be down to one. So, prison guard. You lure the guard into your cell. Cautious is seeking out, then shut and jam the door. Well, it's not my cell, it's somebody else's. <laughs> Remove an encounter marker from this zone. Encounter markers being these dudes. So, boom, we have now made these two spots not too dangerous. And again, I just want to remind you all that I could spend some resources to like get cards back and take another action. Like, for example, Athena could spend her other remaining might to get her fate card back. It would be uh, tapped, which means you couldn't actually use it again this turn, but it wouldn't go to oblivion. But I think we're okay. It's fine. All right, so all the enemies are dead. Nobody's like moving up to the Sentinel board. And we get all our cards back, except Athena has to oblivion this card. And it goes under the other one. So to get her shield back, she'll have to focus into that one first. And then after two ways, we have an upkeep phase. So things get untapped. So Zeus is a sword to be usable again. Uh, if we had pushing limits, we would reset those. Those are the things where you can put cubes and spend resources to get a fifth or sixth action a turn. Uh, we would trigger any conditions. This one doesn't have any. Although uh, uh, later scenarios will have like more of a timer. This one doesn't really have much time pressure as long as you're being smart. And then another thing we're going to do in two plays, we're going to shuffle. Oh, I shouldn't be looking at them. <laughs> shuffle these cards up and we'll give one to Athena. She'll start in the battlefield and one to Zeus. She'll start in cover. So at the end of every two kind of turns, you randomize who's which. All right, we're going back to wave one. And Athena's in the battlefield. I don't know why I put her over there. And yay, she got the dry kind of we knew was coming because <laughs> we set it up that way. All right. What do I want her to do? She could start the attack. But let's, uh, you know what? Let's move first. Because if I happen to get a second monster, I want to attack them both with my spear. So she'll do her double action to take a move and then to take a start combat. So she's moving to be with Zeus now that this is a safer area. And it's one, two she has to beat. And five. We're fine. No extra enemy. Okay, and then for a second action, she is going to start combat with the Spear of Judgment. She hasn't leveled up, so she doesn't get any automatic hits. So she has a two blue automatically and then a randomized yellow. So for like a five or a six... That is a two. So that's a three damage hit to her or a two damage hit to her from the automatic one. Well, we'll put the blue out because clearly uh, improving that one will make it a lot better a lot more quickly. All right, then Zeus is in the same area as her. Whoops, I'm on the wrong side for Zeus. Zeus is in the same area as her, so he's got a feint, a shield, or he can just give her some might. Let's do the feint. It'll give him another divinity. He might be able to level up again soon. And now let her reroll the die once because the only thing worse would be a one. A three or greater would be awesome. Oh, or is that a six? That is a super kill <laughs> with no negatives whatsoever. Well, let's go ahead and resolve that. You're dead. And she goes up to two and we killed another guard, which means we get rid of the other door. Okay, so everyone can move into the torture chamber from wherever. And it says we read the rumor card after you've found both keys. You overhear the conversation of two guards who seem concerned about you finding the flute. What kind of flute is it? Perhaps it will lead you closer to the exit. Okay, flip the objective card to its B side and follow the instructions. Well, there's no flipping. I had to print this out. Uh, so what's it got now? So we sell it to defeat Drykinas. And if we get the yellow, we get another uh, spark. If we get a green, you find a note. And if we get the red, we find the flute. And that'll get rid of one of the two tokens from Attempt Escape. We need to get rid of both of those to actually be able to leave. Cool. And obviously, we're going to reshuffle these so we don't know which is which. All right, so we got to kill two, potentially three of these dudes. Now, it's only one action for both of them. Now, what can we do? The feat is in here for somebody to claim, although right now Athena is in the battlefield, so I don't want her to necessarily get that. We can't attempt escape yet, so there's not much to do in here. Uh, here, freeing a fellow god won't matter because nobody's uh, imprisoned or doesn't have that condition. We could check another cell again. Sure, let's have uh, who's Zeus. Let's have Zeus do that. The last one was only helpful, right? <laughs> Maybe they're all helpful. 
You would draw another random scene card. Enraged Enchantress. Ooh, two divinity. Why is Zeus leveling up so much? <laughs> a dreadful scream pierces the darkness of a cell. Abruptly, a sinister creature, formerly a regal enchantress, leaps towards you. I'm finally free, she exclaims, darting away with a haunting, mad laugh. <laughs> a mere shadow of her former grace. This marks a story event that will shape your game in unexpected ways later. Now place this card next to your player board. Great. Great. <laughs> That's what I want to do now. I think I might want to have Athena go in here to get ready to draw attention when she's in the shadows. We could also drain. Let's drain first, so don't forget about that. We'll drain her for two, and we'll do one spark, one might, two. And then, oh shoot, I only have one action card left, so if she moves, then she won't be able to also uh, fill her cup, for example. And she can always sneak on her next turn and not have the chance of drawing anybody. So let's go ahead and just have her fill her cup for her action. Gets her to two nectars. She's doing pretty good uh, resource-wise. And yeah, then I don't think uh, I don't have another action card. And there's no challenges for her to do. So unless I spend something to get something back, which I'm not going to, we'll call ourselves done. Zeus, though, he could. Hmm, he has all of his actions left, so he could do rest to get some resources or to level up. He's got four divinity. And he could do focus to get his one feet card back. All that seems good. Let's see. Let's do a four divinity would let me make my lower attack better. Or is drain more effective so we can drain more might more quickly? Yeah, and his weapon needs might to reuse. Sure. So let's go ahead and level up our drain. That'll go up to his little board up there. So this gives him more flexibility. Now he can choose with like the Drakina that give you two drain. He can choose to make them both might. So cool. I think it's maybe kind of useful. And then for the other one, why not? Let's have him... Focus to get back his, what was it? Thunder. Oh my gosh. It's a great one. It costs one might, but now he can get might faster to increase one of his dice twice. Or in support, he has to be at least one or away. He gets a divinity and he'll do one automatic stamina to somebody like if they're almost dead. That's cool. And we're going to call it done there because again, Athena can't do much yet. There's no enemies to move up, just the one dead one. So yeah, we're just going to move to wave two. Now Zeus is the one drawing a card. Ah, yes, it's another Drakina. And if we get over here to draw attention, if Athena can do that this turn, then she'll be able to uh, make sure we have another one on top, probably. But first, I'm going to have Zeus do a similar thing to Athena. And well, actually, hmm, Zeus maybe want to run straight to here. He'll definitely get a second enemy, but he's at two enemies killed. So if he kills them both, he'll get the four and he can remove one of these figures and make that a safer place. Okay, so let's actually pause for a second and have Athena go first. I'm going to have her sneak over here for her first action. Remember, nobody can be drawn from that. And then I'm going to have her use her challenge to draw attention. Because I want to make sure that if Zeus does get a second enemy, it's going to be another guard. And top card with a giant's hand. No, Drakina. Yes. Okay, cool. So we'll put the giant's hand on the bottom and both Drakina on top. So we'll definitely have another person we want. Okay, now with that, Zeus is going to do his double action to move and then start combat. Oh, crud. No, he's not, because you need Nectar to move extra. So he's going to spend an action just to get a Nectar, and then he'll spend it to do a double move. And since he's going through six spaces, he's going to draw another enemy no matter what. He's going to need to roll for it. So here we go. We got a double Drakina going on. So that was the fill cup action. Then he's going to start combat with his sword. So he's got the yellow set to a three ready to go. Two more yellows that hopefully roll higher than that. Oh, that's a double four. Both of those will at least hit. That's a great start. Yeah, he's not going to use that. He's not going to spend a might to keep all three dice. And let's not forget he's getting an auto hit from his uh, leveled up thing. There we go. Okay, and I really want him to kill him. Now, again, I think this will boost them to three life, which means he wouldn't be killing either of them. Oh, crud, crud, crud. I was about to have him <laughs> use, like, the Sword of Omens and give him Sight Beyond Sight and say Thundercats and raise his boost up to fives. But I just realized I don't have any might. I, I leveled up my ability to get might, but I never actually drained any of it, which was, in retrospect, dumb. Because, let's see, yeah, a five would have us taking a hit, but doing two damage to kill him. Well, Athena's pretty close. What can she do? She can do a stunt to make one of them good and then re-roll or hmm, have him pass a dagger. But I think once a die is set, you can't change the die that's already there. All right, I think I know how to do this, uh, <laughs> at least to uh, some extent. I'm going to have... Uh, do, 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 do. I'm going to have Athena move in, and then she's going to play... Oh, I guess she didn't need to move in, but it's okay. I'm going to have her play her stunt card, which will let us increase one die by a value. And we'll make the... Yes, this one that has no damage coming be a five. So Zeus will get hurt, but it'll also do two damage to her and finish her off. And this one might be weird, but it'll make sense in a second. Zeus is going to take an action 
to do the fill cup and get one nectar again, because nectar as a bonus action at any time can be spent on a one for one basis to add one hit to a combat. So that's going to make this a three hit combat. So even if she does get one extra life, it won't matter. And then here, I don't want to lose Icor, so let's go ahead and have him shield himself. And boom. So we'll resolve these. So she makes herself a three life character and then she dies. Oh, I forgot to actually put the shield. <laughs> she tries to attack, but is blocked and also dies. Sadly, Zeus doesn't have any actions left to actually drain them. But we do kill two more monsters, which takes that to a zero. Now one of these three is permanently gone. Nice. Now we got to flip two of these. We want green and red. Okay, green. Great. We'll see what that is in a second. Yes. Okay, good. So we saved ourselves one thing. Uh, so this says you found the flute. Remove one of the two tokens from attempt and escape. Cool. And now we got to read the note. Okay. And then this goes away completely. I can't believe these idiots keep forgetting the one thing that can help if the giant goes nuts. I've made a copy for myself and hid it in a torture chamber just in case. I turn out to be an idiot too. So yeah, that was a misprint. It should have been 102, but now we can search for a clue there as a battlefield uh, challenge. And once we do that, I'm assuming that'll maybe take away the other token from attempt escape and we can get out of here. By the way, we are in the torture chamber now with a bunch of extra weapons. So to show you these, this is how much uh, spark it would cost to pick them up as an action during the battlefield, how much carrying capacity they would use, and then you would have another way to attack in the same turn. So this one just lets you roll a die, but if you spend a might, you can increase that die or any of your dice by two. The whip lets you roll two dice, keep one, and then uh, you can re-roll rank one results for free. So if you roll the worst result, and the sawtooth blade lets you... Okay, so yeah, the hook you have to pay, but it lets you increase whatever you rolled by two. This one does it automatically by one. Pretty cool. And we've still got the uh, maneuver slash evasion feat. That's really powerful. Uh, just hanging out over here if we can ever get it. But that's the end of this round. Uh, these two defeated people go away without me ever draining them, which is sad. And Athena now has three of her feats in Oblivion. That's not ideal. And we'll shuffle to see who's next in the hot seat. Athena's still in cover and Zeus is still in the battlefield. And now Zeus is going to draw two people. Spawn. Oh, we haven't actually seen them yet. So you only have one life. You can only drain them for one. And then you get another spawn in your lore slots and not quite attacking yet. But hey, they are way easier to kill. In fact, heck, Zeus's little uh, ball lightning thing from cover would just blow him up immediately. But these are on Zeus for now. But let's not waste any time. Let's have Zeus uh, check what the clue is right away. On one of the shelves filled with rusty and dirty torture tools, you find a scroll with the sheet music of a familiar song. It's very Orpheus-ish, isn't it? You are surprised, but you take the parchment. Who knows what it may hold, be useful for in the future. Remove another token from escape attempt. All right, so now somebody in the battlefield could try to do the escape attempt, and we could finish. Now, here's the thing. If we leave behind the weapons and the feet, we can never get them. If uh, we have cards in our Oblivion, they start in Oblivion in the next scenario. So there could be some reasons to sort of hang out and try to uh, tank through some damage and stuff. But, you know, I, I want to show you the uh, <laughs> the end of the mission a little bit quicker so I can get to my thoughts. So let's go ahead and have uh, Zeus take a move action. The fact that he has enemies on him doesn't really affect him at this point. He's going to have to roll a four or less, or sorry, a five or more, or he'll have to get a person on him. Uh, nope, he gets another card, which is another giant hand. But people can't stop you from exploring. Let's challenge again. Let's see what attempt escape means. I would get another divinity for Zeus. My guy is divine as heck. Uh, you don't know what to expect from it, but you start playing the familiar song of the flute. When you are halfway through, you notice something strange. Flip the special scene card. Sleeping giant. There are no more hands. No crooked fingers looking for you. You lean forward, but you see no movement at the bottom of the pit either. By the way, I assume this giant guy is a Hecatonkeres, right? For those new mythology, the ones with, what is it, 50 heads and 100 arms? As you listen carefully, you realize the weird sound you've been hearing for a while is indeed snoring. Briarius, the hundred-armed giant, fell asleep to the magical sound of the flute. Some uh, errors in writing here. The path down the stairs is now clear. Okay, remove the X from the stairs. The scenario ends at the end of the round when at least one player is located in the exit. Oh no, the end of the round? Oh, so Zeus is going to get murderfied. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, and wounds don't go away at the end of a, a mission either. So me trying to rush things, maybe not the best idea. Oh, for Zeus's final action, let's do that. Oh, I forgot to even use the brawl thing. All right, so I'm using this swordy sword. Oh, I still have no friggin' might because I didn't uh, drain anybody. Darn it. Well, here, at least you have him use for his first action the fill cup to get one nectar to boost his attacks. And then he'll do this. So he gets to roll the two yellows. A five and a three. Okay, that's not the worst in the world. The five could kill any people straight up. 
Um, I guess I don't care if the giant's hand drags Zeus away as long as Athena's at the exit. And that would kill the Drykina. And the spawn adding an extra dude, that's not a big deal. Oh, that's right, he gets a plus one hit. I guess I put on the giant's hand in case I do decide to boost it. Although Zeus can't boost anything, he's done. Right, but Athena could check the final cell. She could pass uh, Zeus a dagger for that spawn guy. Um, but she also needs to move. And to move extra, she needs to spend might, which she has. Okay, so this should be fine. She can do a double action to move to the exit. Um... Oh, but she'd have to be in Zeus's spot. So she could move once, move again, pass Zeus a dagger in between, and then I guess uh, get some focus back. Yeah, she really needs some of those feats back. In fact, you know, let's not pass Zeus a dagger at all. Let's just double move and then have her get as many uh, feats back as she can. I think Zeus will be okay. Yes, that gets, ooh, her super shield. I forgot uh, that one was waiting for her. And wisdom lowers a die to give it plus two value. That's pretty awesome. Or just gets a nectar. Cool. So with that, Athena just sneaks right to the exit. Bye, Zeus. All right, and then Zeus. Fun things happen. <laughs> um, he has to resolve the combat. So the giant's hand throws him back to his starting spot, and he's imprisoned again. Okay. And the spawn... We'll put another spawn over here in Zeus's lore area. And then the Drakina, Zeus will kill, but uh, she's going to do one Ichor damage to him. It's only a one hit, so he will have a more expensive time picking up items. And then both of these unkilled dudes would go over to here, not quite filling the Sentinel track. But actually, Zeus should be okay because we get a whole set of turns. I think he doesn't even have any enemies to draw. Because he already got one Nectar to get rid of the Immobilize, so he could spend that. And then if he rests, he could get another Nectar. And then he could use that, pay one Nectar to get an Ichor back to heal himself. And that would probably be about as much as he could do. Oh, actually, he could... Uh, spend one more action to focus. So they both come in with almost all of their feats ready. This is if I was super rushing things. I probably would have, again, wanted to get those weapons and like the other feat card and stuff. But cool. Athena puts the giant to sleep. Zeus, I guess, catches up. <laughs> and that is the end of the first scenario. Again, a simpler one, not as simple as a tutorial. But we didn't have um, the Oracle cards you're drawing every turn for like more bad stuff to happen. We didn't have the Sentinel monsters. So a lot of the time pressure is not as present in this scenario. But that's a little taste of Reign of Hades. So what are some thoughts on this one? So first of all, I think that the board is cool. I love, as you all know, uh, book-based boards where I don't have to like, set too much up. The unique art is really cool. I like the kind of uh, exploration and tactical options and all these little things. Again, am I supposed to know what they do? Maybe I'm not. And that would certainly give a bit more uh, of a feeling of surprise the first time you play. But even if I do, kind of like deciding which ones are worth going for and which aren't, like I never uh, found the third person to sell. And like I said, the scenarios get a lot more in depth from there. So a lot of cool stuff going on. I also generally like the different way they do miniatures that like the enemy cards. It's kind of uh, it's almost like Arkham Horror, actually, I guess. Right. The card game or like Lord of the Rings or Marvel Champions, except those don't really have movements. So yeah, most like Arkham Horror in that the enemies are like on you and you can like move around and do stuff, although they don't get opportunity attacks like they do in Arkham Horror. And like, yeah, the, the, the sort of enemy location is a bit abstracted, but you can still like move around and do things. So I tend to like that kind of stuff, at least just changing up the paradigm. You know, you never really need these to be miniatures. They could be tokens. Maybe they are tokens in one of the versions. I haven't seen what the uh, crowdfunding page looks like, but I think this is cool. Uh, one thing I didn't show you is that if you hurt an enemy, but don't kill them, you can then take on the battlefield, the lore action to move it to your lore area. So it won't uh, go to the Sentinel track. And that lets you move one of these people. So I could have, for example, through careful activities of that kind of thing, like stacked a billion enemies over there and then been able to like freely explore other areas. So you do have ways to like mitigate and control where the enemies are. I think it's a cool system. I think it's pretty interesting. Maybe my favorite thing about the game is the cover battlefield mechanic. I just think it's a lot of fun. It opens up a lot of tactical possibilities. The fact that you are both like purely a support character and purely a combat character is cool. Your options for how to like do things change up. You can move into a very dangerous place and if you don't uh, roll to draw an enemy, then you'll suddenly sneak into the shadows. You can kind of picture it as though you stealthily like went in there to get something like when Athena gets, went to get our weapons and then left immediately. So I think this is is one of the coolest things. I haven't uh, played it full four player yet. So the idea of like kind of taking turns doing this and like watching for a while, I, I do, I don't know. <laughs> I think one to two player might be the absolute best spot for me and somebody like me who uh, doesn't love downtime, but it seems like it'll work pretty well either way. 
Then for the actions, kind of going along with the cover and battlefield thing, I really like the choices here. You know, the uh, the boosting kind of feat cards are super powerful, but you have to do more to get them back. The actions give you lots of options. Now, <laughs> a complaint. Gosh, this is like tiny icon vomit <laughs> on the board here. So, you know, I know they're trying to like show us things. I don't know. I try to think of how they would do it. I think like these icons could be on here. These things could be bigger. I don't know. Right now, it's okay. Like I figured out how the actions go, but it doesn't look very nice. And it's certainly not easy to learn the game with all of this. Now, uh, they do have a, uh, sorry, everything. They do have a simplified version on the back when you play the prologue. And then you kind of like add in the full version of the leveling up. Oh, I just destroyed everything there, didn't I? <laughs> but yeah, I, I think this is not the best look for the game. Again, it wasn't too hard once I got used to it. Like you, you learn what the actions do pretty quickly, but it's never, I don't know, easy to grok with the way they currently have the graphic design. But yes, the action cards, the system, playing cards, being able to play multiple ones, even though I never use that, managing all of your resources and stuff. I think that's all great. I also think combat is really interesting. Now, there is a lot of luck in it. You saw like the difference between like a one and a six is huge. <laughs> so you have mitigation. You can reroll. But if you like roll really well on your combat dice or if you roll really well on your fate dice and never spawn anybody uh, versus like rolling terribly, that's going to change your experience a lot. So those who are random and diverse, I don't know if this is the best game for you. Just keep that in mind. But the idea of combat of like starting it and then sort of having like all the time in the world to mitigate it and like have your friends come in and like play cards to help you out. I think that's a cool, very different way to do combat. I enjoy that. And then the leveling up is pretty neat. Now, <laughs> this is a campaign. What would I compare it most to? Oh, uh, Perdition's Mouth. If anybody uh, ever saw that game, this is a campaign where a lot of things like kind of carry over. So you don't get like automatic leveling up. You saw here like Zeus, just by how things went, got a ton of divinity and Athena didn't get much at all. So Zeus leveled up twice and Athena hasn't leveled up at all. And that's definitely going to happen sometimes in your campaign. I haven't seen anything yet. Maybe it's later in the... Uh, the scenarios, but I haven't seen anything yet that kind of balances that. Uh, also, you, like you might come into a battle with wounds if things went poorly. You might have like all your feet in the uh, oblivion or whatever it's called. One character who's a jerk might go and grab like all the weapons when somebody else doesn't have any time to. So for better or worse, they don't have a lot of like nuanced control of the leveling up paradigm. They kind of leave it to the players to decide how they're going to do. And I guess Gloomhaven is kind of like that too. You can have one character get 10 gold and one character get none. And if you play by the rules as written, you can't trade gold. So you're stuck there. Or one character could like just get tons of experience and level up and somebody else could not. But Gloomhaven at least has uh, the the promotion or whatever it's called, you know, the, the retirement mechanic. So if somebody like blasts ahead of everybody else, eventually they'll get back down to a basic character. This doesn't have anything like that. I also don't think it's as extreme as Gloomhaven can get. But yeah, just like something to be aware of. Uh, it does have cool leveling up. And uh, let's see if I can show you real quick. Oh, here we go. When the characters level up to level two, first of all, they like look cooler. They look more godly. They get access to abilities. So Zeus would then have his swiftness ability or motivation ability. So there are like cool things that happen when you level up, not just your stats and like actions get a little more effective. So I like the leveling up just with that caveat, that warning that there aren't the controls in there to make sure that it's even and every player is getting like the full leveling up experience. So there you go. That's Reign of Hades, a very different take on a campaign like dungeon crawler kind of feel. I like the theme. I uh, like a lot of the gameplay. So hopefully that helps you out in deciding for yourself. Go check out the campaign page when it's up and see what you think. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.